Hi. Megan Kelly, welcome to the program. How are you, Megan? Hi, Glenn. Good to see you. How you doing? Uh, well, good. I mean, what's going to happen this time? Are they going to get him this time? They're going to get him. And I don't know about you, but I don't know. It's been, you can kind of laugh at it and it's kind of absurd. But now that it's, I mean, the first criminal trial of Donald Trump has just begun. They're in the courtroom. The witnesses will be called eventually after they pick the jury. And they're going to try to put this guy behind bars, potentially. They're 100 percent taking their best shot at stopping him from winning this race. And it really, for me as a lawyer, it's been a very sobering morning. I'm just disgusted. I cannot believe we're doing this. I, I, it's like, it's like Princess Diana behaving like a street whore. That's what we're doing. The United States of America doesn't do this. And because we're in the hands of this scummy prosecutor, multiple, it's not just Alvin Bragg, but he's the lead on this. We've gone down this road pretending a, a payment to a porn star who is threatening to expose an affair is a crime that warrants 34 counts. And they're going to make it as sleazy as humanly possible. We're going to hear about David Pecker, who ran the National Enquirer, owned AMI Media, and the catch and kill schemes to bury negative stories on Trump and to inflate stories on on Hillary. Great. I can't wait to hear about Fusion GPS. Mm. Was Trump the only one trying to get dirt printed on his opponent? Because that's what this jury is going to be left with, that he worked with dirty magazines to get Hillary painted as fat and unwell and without talking about how his campaign was spied on. She's been trying to get him impeached or thrown in jail, along with President Obama, for years. It, politics is disgusting and dirty and underhanded, and we wish it weren't so. But guess what? It's so. Welcome to America. And never before have we put somebody on trial for antics around it or a man on trial for not screaming from the roof, rooftops. I paid off a porn star so she didn't humiliate me with my wife. We are embarrassing ourselves with this trial. I feel appropriately disgusted. What is the difference between uh, this trial and the trial that didn't happen? Because I only lied about sex, uh, you know, to uh, save my marriage, to make sure I didn't humiliate my wife. That's basically why Donald Trump perjured himself. Um, I'm not Donald Trump, but uh, Bill Clinton perjured Clinton. himself, and nothing happened there. Everybody just walked away. What What's the difference between these two? One's a Democrat and one's a Republican. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, if you're a Democrat, you can lie. Ask Fanny Willis. Ask Nathan Wade. It's fine. You can lie on the stand under oath like Bill Clinton did. It's okay. And you know, it's just, an affair. just an affair. Oh, wait. That's what Trump was doing, too, allegedly. That's wait. He was lying to cover up an affair. In only one lane does it become a felony. And just, you know, not to get too deep in the weeds, Glenn, but let's not forget what's really happening here is a misdemeanor bookkeeping snafu or error or misstatement that the statute of limitations had run on. Right. They reinvigorated a dead claim by saying, well, it was made to cover up an underlying felony which was a campaign finance violation. You, you made an in $130,000 donation, quote-unquote, to your own campaign by paying off Stormy Daniels to win an election. Well, guess what? That's not a campaign finance violation. The only way you get the campaign finance violation is if the payment could only ever have made, been made for one purpose, and that is to help your campaign. Well, guess what? Again, hush payments have been made by men to shut women up since the dawn of time. Right. It doesn't have to be to save one's campaign. And that is the relevant legal test, which Alvin Bragg should know, because it's the reason the feds were not interested in pursuing this claim against Donald Trump. So is it just a corrupt judge that is that is making all the Because the judge should have looked at that and said, no, you can't do this. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's not just because we've got Mr. Bragg. Um, but yeah, the, the judge is a serious problem. A, a, a nonpartisan judge would have thrown this out on the papers pretty easily. And I do believe there's a very good chance that this will ultimately, no matter what happens with the jury, get thrown out on appeal. 
like most of the prosecutions against Trump, not the obstruction case, but the J6 case could get thrown out soon. Actually, if the Supreme Court throws out the obstruction charges in this other case that's going up involving J6 defendants, not Trump, if the Supreme Court does anything on presidential immunity, and then even if he loses that J6 case, if there's a trial, I think it could get thrown out on appeal. But the, he has to go through the humiliation. We, we, America, have to go through the humiliation of this criminal trial first. We, we just saw our former president dragged into a criminal courtroom today. And in typical Trumpian fashion, he said, I'm proud to be here. He said, I'm very proud to be here. Well, that's smart. Trump's smart. He always does a positive spin on anything that happens to him. But let's be honest. This is not a proud moment. Not, no. not for him. Not for us. Not for I'm his family. I'm ashamed of us for doing this. So what do you say um, about Donald Trump? Uh, this is, you know, something that, you know, we would be disgusted by if it was something that was happening on the other side. Bill Clinton comes to mind. That we as conservatives mm-hmm. would say, this guy, he shouldn't be doing this as president. But I, I, in the Clinton case, it was illegal. He perjured himself. But there, there really isn't anything illegal here. And if there was... It was, it's past the statute of limitations, right? Well, there's such a difference between those two cases. Let me tell you, Glenn, no one is allowed to lie under oath. Correct. It's a felony. It's a felony. It's perjury. And a lawyer really isn't allowed to lie under oath. You have additional duties of candor to a court before they admit you into the bar. You swear not to do things like that. So there are additional obligations on a lawyer, which Clinton was. And on top of that, there are additional obligations as president. He violated them all. He committed a felony. Donald Trump made a bookkeeping misstatement. That's what he did. And for that, he's being hauled into court. There's just no comparison between the legal sins. And look, I don't have any doubt Trump's going to be convicted. And to be honest, I don't have any doubt Trump did this. I, I'm not, I, I don't really doubt that Trump didn't write down the hush money to Stormy Daniels, porn star, who was threatening to go to my wife and the media about an affair. I mean, right. I, I, right. I, I probably did do that. Well, he, he there was another one that he paid off. Where he, there was another one he paid off that it, it wasn't true. So, I mean, we don't know, right? The doorman? Yeah. The door, I mean, because, yeah, that's. Well, that's another piece of the AMI media piece of this case, which hasn't gotten as much attention, but it's going to when you hear, I think David Pecker is going to take the stand. The guy who ran AMI owned it. Um, He's going to take the stand and say, yeah, we caught and killed stories, including from this Karen McDougal, who was the 1998 Playmate of the Year, who allegedly had an affair with Trump and also took a payout from AMI to write health columns. (laughs) <laughs> instead of take the story to a publication that would run with it. This is this is what the allegation is that if you were a friend of Pecker, like Trump was, you could get this kind of thing done for you. And that's what he was doing for Trump. And we're going to have witness testimony to that effect. And that's OK. I, is, is anyone shocked no. that Trump didn't want all of his affairs coming out? No, I, like, I don't care. I don't, I'm sure he has had affairs. I'm sure You know what? I'm sure Obama did, too. The sainted Obama. And I'm sure Bill Clinton did. And the only reason the Clinton thing became a story is because Linda Tripp decided to tape his lover and go public with the story. It wasn't neither pair of the lovers wanted that public. Linda Tripp brought it public. And then Bill Clinton, rather than being a man and owning up to it, lied under oath. So we're back to that problem. But this is just we shouldn't be knowing about any of this. We shouldn't be humiliating ourselves and getting neck deep into the gory details of it. But the Democrats are going to be awash in in seedy Trump affair details for the next six weeks. And it's anything but accidental. How do you think this plays with the American people? I think they're going to be disgusted like I am. But unfortunately, I think the very group Trump is struggling with, women, former Republicans in the suburbs, like where I live, 
they're not going to like this, you know, mm. because m- most of our husbands don't cheat on us with porn stars and playmates of the year and pay well, them I would off. Like, I, would hope that, I would hope that yeah. it doesn't just, we don't, yeah, we're all cheating, but not necessarily yeah. with porn stars and playmates, <laughs> you know. Well, and there's I also, mean, also so, only so many playmates of the year. They would yeah. be way too busy if everyone was cheating <laughs> yeah, with way them. too busy. I mean, I think most husbands yeah. don't cheat on their wives. I don't think they do. And so they're not going to like this. You, you can't forget MAGA, okay? I get, like, those guys who are out in front of the courthouse right now who are amazing. The, the, what, the pro-Trump guys with all their pro-Trump gear, and they're like the anti-Trump guy. Did you see the guy with the flute? <laughs> <laughs> he hates Trump. It's like, liar, narcissist, felon. And then he's playing lovely flute. <laughs> it's like, God bless America. Anyway, the, the hardcore MAGA, they, they're not going to care. I, we right, all know right, right, right. nothing's going to change their mind. And most Republicans are on Team Trump and realize this is a political persecution. But there is a group of independents now, center-right independents who used to be Republicans who don't like Trump. And it would be very helpful to the Republican Party and Trump if those people could be more disgusted with Biden than with Trump. Right. And they might yet be. But this is not going to help. And I don't mean the conviction. The conviction won't help either. But six weeks of Trump's a shitty husband. That's whoa, not going to help. Remember, you're, we're not you're on, podcast on, land. on broadcast. Sorry, uh, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, so, uh, so Megan, does he go to jail? You said he's going to be convicted. Does he go to jail? And what, what would that mean? How much time would he be facing for this? He's not going to jail on this case. He's not. But you have lunatics like Andrew Weissman, who honestly, he's not a, like this, this guy's got a very legitimate legal resume. I realize you know, he, he left the FBI and all that, but um, he was general counsel of the FBI, he was a U.S. attorney, and he's out there saying nonsense like, well, Trump's a recidivist. A recidivist is somebody who continues to commit crime after he's served time or been convicted. You know, like you just can't stop yourself from selling the heroin. That's not Trump. So it is true that there's the potential for jail time if this judge somehow turns him into a repeat offender because he's facing three other criminal trials. That, that, that's not happening. So I don't think he's going to jail for this one. Uh, I think it'll be a matter of fines. But it, that doesn't change much. I mean, jail time would be far, far worse. But they still have their conviction. And w- the thing is, guys, half of independents and still one-third of Republicans are saying they like Trump, but they can't vote for a convicted felon. And I was having this discussion with, actually, it was, I think it was with you guys, Stu. You and Dave Marcus were on my show last week. What if they mean it? I know we don't think they mean it. What if they do mean it? What if they, because I would look at this case like, uh, this, or this case, uh, what if we're wrong? What if we're downplaying this? Like, eh, no one, everybody knows this is BS, but we're wrong. When we misread the polls, and we do often because who the heck knows what to believe on polls anymore. Yep. We get burned. And so today really could be day one in Trump losing this election. Oh it, it could be. I, I don't think it will be. But I recognize the danger of what they're doing here. And, of course, we all know that's why they're doing it. I was I was hoping that it was going to backfire on them. I think it it has to some degree. I don't know when you add the actual felony, uh, you know, to this. But well, that's uh, the thing, Glenn. That's the question: Is the backfire bounce already baked in? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, has he already gotten all the bounce there is to get from the outrage over? resetting norms that have been in place for almost 250 years. And that's, and that of course would be the Democrats plan to boost him in the primary. He'll get whatever back or whatever bounce he gets from the backlash. And then it wanes over the course of what they hoped would be four criminal trials. Now it looks like just this one, but this is their best shot. Six weeks, disgusting man, horrid husband, and now convicted felon. They don't need to hurt him much. You know, no. Joe Biden only won by 45,000 votes. I know. They, mm. they don't need to hurt him much. Megan Kelly, host of the Megan Kelly Show, uh, follows this program on SiriusXM. 
uh, as always, Megan, good to talk to you. Thank you.